Good morning. Welcome to my show about salmon fishing in central Puget Sound. I will be talking about fishing in central Puget Sound. First off, we'll start out with a slight introduction about myself. My name is Captain Gary Cryan. I've been owning operator of All Star Fishing Charters for over 35 years. I fish mostly from Seattle and Everett. Uh, I'm the past president of the Charter Boat Association of Puget Sound. I was on the Sports Fish Advisory Board uh, for the Department of Fish and Wild from its inception. Uh, I've attended many of the Pacific Fisheries Management Council meetings and the North of Falcon meetings. I also served on the Board of Directors from NACO. I have actually minimized my participation in those meetings in the last couple of years, hopefully trying to graduate from full-time fishing to semi-retirement. I don't think you really truly ever retire from fishing, but nevertheless, I am trying to cut back. This is my boat called the Morning Star, 28 Uniflight. I'm sure that if you are a fisherman out in Puget Sound, that you've certainly seen this boat. I would be willing to bet that there is no one that has more hours in central Puget Sound in the last 35 years than I do. I believe I have about somewhere around 70 to 75,000 hours operating out there and so certainly if you fish out there you've seen this boat. Today I plan on having my presentation about Central Puget Sound Chinook King Salmon Fishing. There basically is two seasons in Puget Sound, Central Puget Sound. There's a summer King Salmon and a winter King Salmon or blackmouth fishery as some people call it. The areas that I will be concentrating on is area 8-1, 8-2, area 9, and area 10. For the current seasons, you have to check the Department of Fish and Wildlife website for the latest emergency regulations plus the booklet that they publish to keep up with exactly what's going on uh, and for sure check it out before you go fishing. I'll also be talking about fishing locations, location, location. I'll talk some about gear that I use and techniques that we use to fish for king salmon both winter and summer in these three areas specifically. Summer king salmon, of course, are mostly mature Chinook salmon. They are headed to the rivers for spawning. Uh, they are mostly four-year-old fish, uh, an occasional three. Uh, they're not as aggressive of feeders as the winter kings are. Uh, they are in the similar locations along ledges near shore. Uh, traveling although from the ocean to the river of origin for spawning so they can be caught anywhere in Puget Sound. Do not necessarily or specifically have to be uh, as precise about your locations. Mostly they appear in Puget Sound in July, June, July and August uh, once in a while a late one, but our main season in the past years in these areas has been starting around July 16th and running for anywhere from 15 to 45 days. So that's the prime time to target uh, mature summer king salmon. This is what we're looking for. This is a summer king salmon. There is a difference between actual physical difference that most people can identify between a summer 
and a winter king salmon. I will show some of both here as we go. Winter king salmon in Puget Sound, they are immature Chinook, meaning that they are not going up to spawn, meaning they are mostly two and three year old. You can even catch them in the summer because there are some Chinook that live and maintain their whole life in Puget Sound and not necessarily depart and make a trip up north into Canada and Alaska like some fish do. Uh, immature Chinook, of course, are very aggressive feeders. They're like teenage kids. Mostly they feed whenever they find food. And a teenage, if you have a teenage kid, you know that they're going to go to the refrigerator and all their friends are going to come if your refrigerator is full. If the refrigerator is full with bait out here in Puget Sound, you're most likely to find immature Sinook salmon. So look for the bait. Look along underwater ledges near points of land. And of course, the currents control the bait movement. The tides control the current, but the con current controls the bait movement. So think about the current as opposed to the tide only for the bait movement. These are winter kings as opposed to summer kings. Typically, they are a little smaller because they're younger fish, but not always are they smaller, but usually they are. This is how you identify a Chinook salmon in the ocean phase of its life, which is still what we're dealing with here in Puget Sound, is an ocean phase uh, Chinook salmon. Uh, the main thing to identify Chinook from other species of salmon is the black gum line. That is the number one thing that you look for. None of the other salmon have a lower gum line that is completely black. Also in Puget Sound, we very specifically have rules and regulations that mean that we have to identify a adipose fin clipped fish from a non-clipped fish. The rule states that any fish that has a healed adipose fin, whether it's got a little snub or not, is not the key. The key is, has it healed? And this is a slide to help you identify. In this slide, this picture is actually in the regulations booklet. Be sure that you understand the difference between a uh, healed adipose fish, clipped fin fish, and a non-clipped fish. Very important for fishing here. <clears throat> the area rules that specifically that I'm going to deal with today, uh, being area 81, 82, area 9, and area 10, they are subject to change regularly. The salmon season setting process is usually done in the early part of the year <clears throat> with the final regulations being developed and completed at the North of Falcon and Pacific Fisheries Management Council meetings, usually concluding around March 10th, give or take a few days. <clears throat> you, of course, need to check the website, WDFW website, before you go fishing. They have emergency rules that come out. They're listed there. The, the regulations booklet is listed there. <clears throat> but currently, most of our Chinook fishery is limited to one king salmon, 22 inches and longer, and also fin clipped. In these three areas, we have not had a regulation 
that is not like this uh, yet. So uh, that's kind of the general expectations. All of the seasons are based on a projected guidelines of total number of encounters for some of the fisheries and or legal fish for some of the others. And that's important because they certainly monitor and keep track of the fish that we catch. There is an app called Fish Washington that the department has developed that you can install on your smartphones. Uh, I will be perfectly honest with you, it needs some development and work. It is not, it updates every time you turn it on and if you're not in good cell coverage, it's not updating and the regulation that you get may not be the latest up-to-date one. So I would recommend you check the regulations the day before you go fishing and hopefully they're right. These are some more winter kings uh, or black mouth as some people want to call them. If you look at the one on the left there, you will see that down near the tail, the scales are falling off, uh, disappearing from the fish. Most of the mature summer fish, the scale patterns are set very tight, very uh, well set on the fish so that when you lay them on the deck or put them in a net, there's very little scale loss, whereas with immature Chinook, the scales fall off all over the place. So if you catch a fish that the scales are falling off, the odds are that it's an immature Chinook salmon, or doesn't necessarily mean it was caught in the winter, but it probably is an immature Chinook salmon. As opposed to this one being a mature Chinook salmon, because even down by his hand there, you can see that this fish has been handled, yet no scale loss, hardly at all. <clears throat> okay, when it comes to targeting Chinook salmon in Puget Town, it's just like getting the best real estate in the world. It's about location, location, location. Very, very important. Let's talk about places to find these fish in Area 9, Area 10, and Area 8-2. That's my specific topic today. Area 9, of course, is one of the geographic areas in the state of Washington. The state of Washington is divided into 13 geographic areas. Area 9 is the area located between uh, the southern tip of Possession Point, across to the shipwreck, down to Edmonds South, across and all the way out to Maristone, over to Woodby Island, is the area. Now there are some little zones in there that are open or closed during the summer fishery specifically, so you need to look at these regulations and understand that. That's the major portion of Area 9. In Area 9, where we do concentrate most of our fishing uh, in areas like Possession Bar, the area just south of uh, Possession Point, Woodby Island, Useless Bay over by Double Bluff, uh, Point No Point, and then again out at Port Townsend at times. Let's get more specific about how we approach these areas. Off of Possession Point, uh, like I said, the current controls the fish. So we look at the tides, we look for the optimal current at any one location, and we uh, adjust our fishing location based on where we think the best chance is for these bait fish to be seeking refuge from the main current, therefore allowing the king salmon to come in and feed on them. And when we look at possession bar, as it's called off the south tip of Woodby, uh, the current on a uh, 
ebb tide flows out of Everett and flows across this bar from east to west. And we at All Star Charters like to concentrate on the uh, eastern side of that ledge on the ebb tide and on the western side on a flood tide. And you can see I've drawn uh, schematics representing the 120 foot line, which is basically just a starting point. Sometimes they're shallower, sometimes they're deeper, but mostly what I'm saying here is that we would fish on the two lines that are to the right of this screen on the ebb tide and the one line that is on the left of this screen on the flood tide. Now we'll move on to uh, the next area. This area is Double Bluff, uh, as it's called, out of Useless Bay. Uh, this area seems to be very, very productive on winter king salmon fishing. Uh, and we use the same approach, looking for the current. I like this mostly on an ebb tide when the current is flowing from east to west uh, and starting at the 120 line and going in or going out as necessary. Okay, let's look at the next area. Point no point. This is probably the most popular spot in Area 9 for people who are not necessarily downrigger trolling for salmon. As you can see, the uh, contour line lies more parallel to the beach and with the current, which allows the people who like to drift mooch the opportunity to stay in line with the uh, bait fish for a longer period of time. That's the main thing in this area. Let's move on to the next area. Here's another summer king salmon, uh, and you can see there's no scale loss. Uh, a couple of winter salmon with some scale loss near the tails, just to give you an idea of the difference from them. Like I said, it's not about size so much, it's about the maturity of the fish. Here's definitely uh, a summer king salmon, but you can see it's a little bit of scale loss where someone had uh, grabbed him around the tail, but not up and down the fish. Let's move on to area 10, uh, south of area 9. Uh, and the area 10 encompasses the area from the southern tip of area 9, Edwards, Apple Cove, all the way down to Southworth Ferry Dock and across uh, to the other side. All of that is area 10, including the area behind Bainbridge Island, which as you can see on this map, has some different rules and the area in Elliott Bay. So you see all those numbers that are all listed uh, as sub areas and specific rules for each one of those in the regulations booklet. In area 10, uh, I want to show specifically Jeff Head. We approach this area the similar way as we approach uh, the currents and the fish in area nine using the ledge sticking off of Jefferson Head as a guide. We are fishing on the south side, the green line, from on most outgoing tides, uh, fishing in front of the ledge, which is, I will tell you, the majority of the charter boat operators use this same approach, all-star charters has used this approach for Chinook salmon ever since I started. Uh, everyone I've trained, we all believe that Chinook salmon fishing is better in front of the ledge than it is behind it. Doesn't mean there isn't any there on the other side. It just means we believe it's better on the leaf front side of the ledge when the current is flowing across the ledge. So that means that on the flood or incoming tide, 
we move over to the red side of this ledge to fish. Let's move on to the next slide. Another summer king salmon. Uh, and you can see there's a little bit of gill missing there, which was before we caught him. Another summer king salmon. Now let's move on to area 8.2, which this year did not have any Chinook salmon fishing except for a specific designated fishery in what's called the Tulalip bubble. All of these areas that I have listed here are great winter Chinook fishing areas, but this year they were not open, hopefully in future years. This is the map of area 82, of course extending from the area 9 line at the south tip of Woodby all the way up through Everett and up to Camino Island. There certainly are people who are going to view this or who are in the audience here who have launched from the boat launch at the Port of Everett, the best launch in the state of Washington. Uh, this still is a fantastic area for crabbing uh, and shrimping and will be for fishing when we get back there. But, like I said, there is a summer fishery, a special designated bubble fishery, as they call it, in the Tulalip bubble as it's designated by this green line. Uh, it can produce summer Chinook. It's quite a difficult to be success fishery. You have to work hard for your fish, but there are fish that go through there and they can be caught uh, with the same gear as we use in all the other fisheries. Here's a fish that was caught in area 8-2 uh, just a few years ago when it was open for a winter fishery. Let's talk a little bit about electronics and success for fishing. You have to have good electronics. You must see the bottom contour and bait. You need a GPS map detail and you need to be able to repeat location. As I said earlier, location, location, location. This is what a great looking screen looks like. The big balls are bait fish. The individual slashes are individual fish. When you see this on your screen, you should be catching fish. If you're not, then it probably boils down to the gear that you're using. This is another showing a school of bait with some fish outside of it. This is a school of bait with no fish outside of it. You can, you can see there's a great school of bait, but there's nothing outside of the bait. Not anything was caught here and not likely to be caught. Now let's talk a little bit about terminal tackle. You need good quality tackle and you need a variety. This is a flasher and spoon, very popular. Lots of people use them, and there are many, many colors of spoons. And I'm not going to try to tell you that one is fantastically better than the other. Uh, you need to experiment. This is a squid, which is also trolled behind a flasher. Here's one of the premier flashers that we use, the Gibbs Moon Glow Flasher. Uh, rod and reel hooked up with that flasher. We also use Tomic plugs. The numbers there indicate the color. Very popular when there's lots of bait. I put this slide in to prove that yes, we actually do net fish on possession bar. Another summer king salmon. Some more winter king salmon. This is what you don't want to see when you're out there fishing. Unfortunately, seal and sea lion 
uh, predation and attack on our fishing and fishing gear has uh, gotten very uh, predominant and uh, there's certainly more of it. Uh, it is legal to use uh, a uh, deterrent to keep them away. The moving from an area where they're real prevalent might be the deterrent you use. Uh, you might use a paintball gun, which is specifically listed in the National Marine Fisheries as a legal deterrent. Uh, anything that might harm the seal, though, is not legal. Uh, so you need to be cognizant of that. This is sometimes you get lucky and get some of the fish back. This is what one looks like after it's been attacked by a seal. This one looked like this. That's not what all of them look like, but this is what this one looked like after we got it back. Not really destroyed, but definitely a legal size fish. This one is what you typically get back. The reason that I took this picture is if you look at the gills on this fish and the eye and the side of this fish's face, it's a very strong indicator of what's going on with the fish feeding in Puget Sound. See all the scrapes and rakes on his gills? That's an indication that he's going down on the bottom, turning sideways to grab a uh, sand lance uh, and feed. And that's how he got those scrapes is from barnacles attached to sea anemones and rocks. And you'll see this in the winter an awful lot. That means that your gear must be extremely close to the bottom in order to be very successful at catching these king salmon. So even though you might not retain a fish, even if you catch what we call a shaker, a fish under 22 inches, you should look at the gills on the fish, get an idea of where they are feeding. Important information. Here's some winter kings. Uh, here's a sign that we encounter when we come back to Everett from our trips out salmon fishing. If you will look at the sign up above there, it says Center for Sleep Disorder. And then it says no wake. Pretty interesting. But we've looked at this so many years that uh, we take this quite seriously, as I'll show you. We are very serious about no wake. So if you have children who uh, need to be put to sleep, we can do it for you. Just send them with us. Most of them come back looking like this after a day fishing with us. We can wear them out. This is a harbor seal that we see quite regularly. Uh, a great uh, added bonus to our fishing trips. This is a slide to show you how to typically hook up our downriggers. Uh, this just gives you an idea of what we use uh, study this. It'll just give you a guideline uh, for how we hook up our downriggers. We use an Albright knot to tie our top shot, as we call it, which is the monofilament that we use on the end of our fishing line before between our braid and our flasher. And this is the knot that we use to tie those two together. This knot is great for any dissimilar size lines, whether it be braid to mono or even small mono to large mono. And it will pass right through the guides. Here's some instructions on how to tie this knot. Uh, so you can study those uh, and learn how to tie this knot. Very good instructions here. We do have a short notice call list option 
listed on our website. So if anyone wants to get on our short notice list for a discounted price, that's all available on the website along with lots of other information. Uh, and as I say, the website is www.allstarfishing.com. Thank you very much. That concludes my slide.